Let's have some fun. Let's invite our friends to a Polynesian winding. A beautiful dinner with a tropical accent. A hula li, as they say in Hawaii. And we all wear lays about our necks and sit on the floor on mats and eat poi with our fingers and roast pig. Not so fast, my dear. Lays about our necks, yes. But we don't go native. That's fine in Hawaii. But we live on the mainland. Let's settle for a dinner we can manage ourselves, but give it a haunting Polynesian appeal. Can I wear a grass skirt? Must you? Well, not if you object, but we'll make the table look as lush and beautiful as those seductive girls in the islands. A long table with a deep green cloth or a Samoan tapa covered with ferns and green leaves and lots of bright flowers scattered over it and bowls of monkey pod wood or calabash. Lovely? Lovely. And in the center, a bank of brilliantly colored fruits, if you can get them, bananas, persimmons, avocados, pomegranates, and pineapple. And vivid green peppers. I'd add a shaggy coconut, but let's eat. Poo-poos, of course, come first. Oh, poo-poos, those Polynesian hors d'oeuvres on a big lazy Susan. Things like chicken livers with water chestnuts wrapped in bacon, baked diced clams with sesame seeds, Glazed spare ribs with pineapple chunks and kumquats over them. Do we need more? Yes, those startling large shrimp and coconut. And then? Want chicken, Momi? It's spectacular. Chicken breasts in half, a pineapple. Not difficult. Me? I like the chicken better than a genuine Hawaiian curry sauce. The one with coconut your old Hawaiian friend taught you? My old Hawaiian friend, yes. She was a very large woman and wore a flowing gown and was never without a flower in her hair. Well, because this is to be a wing ding of a hu lao li, let's have both. You won't be overworked getting them ready? You promised to help. I'll strum the ukulele to you while you work. I'll settle for a little kitchen help. I'll make the curry then. You make the chicken momi. You see, I don't want my lovely wife to get overtired or frantic. You must greet the guests smiling and relaxed, like a hula dancer. We'll do our dancing in the kitchen. In a grass skirt? No, in an apron. With flour in your hair? You have bewitched me. I'll make those chicken livers, too, and have them ready for last-minute broiling. The Polynesians call them rimaki. We'll need six chicken livers and 18 water chestnuts to make enough. And uh, 18 strips of bacon, don't forget, and nine long onions, a little ground ginger, and a spot of curry. Half a cup of soy sauce, too, at least. Well, start swinging. The dinner music has started. Cut those livers. Fresh or frozen, into three pieces. Wrap each lovingly around a water chestnut. Where do we get the chestnut? Most supermarkets carry them nowadays. The same goes for the kumquats and macadamia nuts and soy sauce. Most everything needed can be found in a modern supermarket or in a Chinese grocery. Do they sell hula dancers too? Don't be childish. You're the hula dancer. And you're so charming that I go right on with the ramaki. Around the chicken liver and chestnut, wrap a strip of bacon and a green onion sliced lengthwise, fixing it with a food pick. Just like a baby shish kebab. Yes, a little. Plop them into the soy sauce and stir in a touch of ginger and curry powder. Marinate them in this sauce for at least an hour. After that, drain, place on a cookie sheet with a rim, and broil for about five minutes. How about last-minute grilling over a little hibachi on the table? That's part of the fun. Have a stack of long bamboo sticks on the table. Each guest spears a romaki on a stick, then holds it for a few seconds over the glowing fire in the hibachi. Is our little hibachi big enough? Big enough? Yes. Put a can of sterno in the bottom, ignite it, and then add a little charcoal. You get a bed of glowing coals. The guests will have a big time grilling their own romaki. It's a bit of stage business that gives the party a touch of the dramatic... Were you ever a movie director? Being ridiculous again. Stick to the hula. And the clams with sesame seeds and the spare ribs. Marinate them first in oil, garlic, ginger, and soy. Then broil. Serve covered with small pieces of pineapple and kumquats and syrup. No sauce to dip in? Yes, sweet and sour. Often called duck sauce. Made of apricots and plums. You can buy it at a Chinese grocery. Maybe at some supermarkets, too. How about those clams with sesame seeds and those outside shrimp? They're on the Lazy Susan, too. Put all the poopoos in dishes around the Lazy Susan and put the hibachi right in the middle. As you would say, that's quite a production. Gives our guests a lot of fun. And a lot of fine food. Now let's talk about my Hawaiian curry. I still like my chicken mummy better than your curry. Okay, then you talk about that. I'll prepare the pineapples for you. Split them in half lengthwise. Take out the core and the pineapple meat. Cut it in chunks and use those chunks as a bed for the chicken breast. You're really helpful. 
Now for those tender little white breasts. You can buy them at many butchers who sell parts. Allow one for each guest. Make a stuffing of veal and pork and slices of white bread soaked in cream and onion and eggs and soy sauce and ginger and monosodium glutamate. Put it through the meat chopper together. Then mix in some roughly chopped water chestnuts. That's your stuffing, and it's some wonderful stuffing. Then press it into the chicken breast. That stuffing sounds like a meal. But you don't use much. Now salt the breasts and sprinkle with oil. Place in shallow pan and bake in moderate oven for about 35 minutes. Slice each cooked breast into four pieces. Press the pieces together and place on the bed of pineapple chunks in the shell. Let me finish. You're getting out of breath. Are Hawaiian men as thoughtful as you? Their women seem to like them. Now for a little glazing. Spread a teaspoon of honey over each sautéed breast and glaze again with a teaspoon of chicken gravy. You can buy it in cans if necessary. Then sprinkle top with sesame seeds. Place in a very hot oven until some of the seeds turn brown. It's as beautiful as a tropical sunset. And lots more nourishing. My curry sauce is a masterpiece, too. That woman from Hawaii, I remember. It's made of milk, grated coconut, garlic, ginger root, butter, onion, curry powder, brown sugar, and flour. Can't you smell the aroma? Just picture large pieces of white meat of chicken being embraced by that tantalizing sauce. You're getting yourself into a romantic mood. What with that big woman with a flower in her hair, Hawaiian sunsets, hula, and now this curry. I've never known you to object to romance. Oh, I'm not objecting and rice, each kernel white and separate. That goes with the curry, and a lot of little dishes, Chinese soup bowls, perhaps, with condiments to sprinkle over the curry chicken. Isn't that right? Better than right. Candied ginger root, chopped peanuts, India chutney, chopped green pepper, crisp bacon broken into small pieces, little pieces of salt codfish, grated coconut. You can use that canned dry coconut flakes on the market now, and chopped green onion. That sounds like a lot. But the more you have, the more fun. A better show. I knew you'd been to Hollywood. Yes, of course I was. I directed Snow Mountain. Snow Mountain? A love story? No, a dessert for our Polynesian dinner. The base is a large cone of shaved ice. Make it early so it can set and stand firm. In the top, place a small metal cup. When it's time to bring this beautiful icy mountain to the table, put some very strong rum, just a little, in the cup, and add pineapple or apricot juice. Along the sides of the chilly mountain, pieces of fruit, oranges, cherries, pineapples, strawberries, grapes, lots of it until the ice is brilliant with these little fruit tidbits. Just before the entrance, ignite the rum and fruit juice and march in with your head high and your eyes sparkling. I told you, Hollywood under the coconut palms. With those long, thin bamboo sticks, each guest spares a piece of fruit, dunks it in the flaming sauce, and then eats it. Hear those sighs of happiness? Yes. Now I know I simply must wear my grass skirt. You'd look pretty under the soft light of Japanese lanterns. They shed a flattering glow over the table. The snow mountain with its jewels of fruit will be beautiful in that light. Bewitching. But I forgot to tell you how to make the mountain. Roll a large sheet of thin cardboard to the shape of a cone about 10 inches high and 7 inches wide at the base. Line it with wax paper or aluminum foil. Then pack with finely shaved ice, press in hard. Stand in freezing compartment of the refrigerator for a few hours. When you are ready, it will slip out easily. Stand it on a flat plate and surround the base with green leaves and a few bright flowers. What kind of flower did that woman wear in her hair? A pink hibiscus, but actually not in her hair. She wore it behind her ear. She was one of the greatest cooks in Hawaii. Did she wear a grass skirt, too? Of course not. She was too fat. But I'm not fat. After I get the poo-poos ready to serve, of course you promised to help me, and the chicken mummy ready, I'm going to put on a grass skirt and a bright green lay about my neck. And when I have finished making the curry, and just before our guests arrive, do you know what I'm going to do? Tell me. I'm going to put a pink hibiscus behind your lovely ear. <laughs> 